Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Russ with RWGResearch.com. So you're in the shed uh, where the rodent coil research takes place, if you haven't seen that. Some very interesting results there. So this is a video response actually to um, 10 manpower. Hi Brad, I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I don't know if you can see me on this. Glad to see you back in action. All you move and all that fun stuff. So you've been playing with the Tesla pancake coil. I actually have many versions of this coil here so we can play around with all kinds. But what I want to show today is um, basically the results that you were seeing. Now I'm lucky enough to have, I should say I'm blessed enough to have the proper oscilloscope. All right, this is a Tektronix TPS 2024B and I do have the power analysis software on here. Now unfortunately I do, have, I do have the current pros, but unfortunately, these things only do... Let's see if we can get this to focus. I don't know how to use this thing. They only go up to... Well, let's see the other way. <laughs> they only go up to... Um, there, you can read it. They only go up to 100 kilohertz. So, these probes are actually completely useless. Um, I want to focus. There we go. These things are actually completely useless. I'm using my phone, so I'm sorry about this poor quality. These probes are completely useless. So let's go ahead and run through this really fast. I'm not going to use the probes. I've got 100 ohm resistors, just like you did. I've got my um, signal generator here. All right, it is set to 20 volts peak to peak. Currently, frequency is here. Um, zero phase shift, zero offset. All right, um, so the oscilloscope. Let me show you what you're looking at. You're looking at channel 1 is the input, channel 3 is the center resistor, and then channel 1 peak to peak, channel 3, and then I've got the frequency here. Even though it's down here, you can look at it. So what I want to show you is that I want to teach you and teach other people, which I think you know this, but you cannot measure AC with Ohm's Law. You have to use watts. And you have to use power factor and you have to understand phase shift and it's not that complicated once you study it however it'll really throw you off you guys remember the rodent coil research you remember the meters would lie to me but the oscilloscope would not and that is important so what i want to show you right now is just i'm going to change the frequency all right very simple test i'm going to change the frequency and I want you to watch what happens to the phase shift. I want you to watch what happens to the voltages here. So the input voltage is going to go down and the output voltage is going to stay high. Now that's technically a current measurement. Both of them are 100 ohm resistors, one watt. So here we go. We're at 556. You can see the frequency here and there. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm, oh yeah. Okay. I'm going really fast in big increments here. So just pay attention to what happens. Now look at our input, RMS. Okay, I'll zoom in on this stuff later. But look at that, we're at three, just over 300 millivolts input and 1.29 volts RMS output. So there's your current amplification. Now what's important, and I'll zoom in on the trace here, is that phase shift. All right, so I'm going to zoom back out because I want to show you, actually, I'll, I'll zoom back in a little bit, time scale. So now I'm going to keep going and look what happens. We actually get to a point where our phase shift is completely out of phase, 180 actually, almost, not quite. And now look, our input goes back up, all right, sorry about the shakiness, to... Uh, Oh, looks like the stream died. Anyway, um, I am doing this live, by the way. So you can see the RMS voltage on channel 1 and channel 2. I'm actually pumping more voltage in. Now, like I said, I'm lucky enough to have some really nice tools here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down. Uh, let's do it fast. Okay. All right. So here's what I want to show you. 
All right, let's, anytime there's a question mark, it means it's measurement error. Don't read anything with a question mark. Now, channel one, channel two, and channel two, channel three are the current probes, but I currently have those disabled um, just because we want to pay attention to channel one and channel three phase, okay? So I'm starting at 666 kilohertz. Just lucky number for you. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I just landed on it. Give me a break. Okay, now look at the phase shift. I'm going pretty fast here. All right, we were at 6, now we're at 11, 13, 20, 27, 45. Let me zoom in for you so you can see that phase shifting. And there's a question mark because I'm too far in. Let me go back out. Anytime there's a question mark, you don't want to... Um, you don't want to pay attention to that measurement. So you have to just set the scope up to get the measurement. Okay. So now we're going in. We're going in. All right. Now we're too high on channel one. Too far zoomed out. There's probably an auto set for this thing. All right. So we're actually... Uh, there it is, flipped to the right phasing. So it's confused because we're getting close to 180. So it's going from positive to negative. So I'm going to go back. All right. Again, I'm going kind of slow so you can see the phase shift. All right. I need to bring, yeah, just let it settle. All right. There we go. And we're heading back towards the phase. Okay. So. Now you you understand the phase shift and what happens to the current and voltage. I'm not going to go into detail here. Let's go back to um, measure. All right. Let's put this back. Um, we can read. All right. So again, let's go find our let's go find our sweet spot. Okay. Let's go find that sweet spot. It's where we get about 300. All right, millivolts input versus our versus our output, and let's get that. Um, okay, about right there is the best we can get. So this is the best we can get now. From what I understand, we should see somewhere around ninety degrees for the best result in this strange manner that we see here. So let's go over to the application, waveform analysis. Uh, what did I do? Waveform, no, I'm sorry. Phase angles. And let's see where we're at. We should be right around, okay, we're at 73. Three, 60, we're actually a little low. Let's go a little bit more towards 90. Yeah, it's about 90 there, huh? Well, now we're over. Let's go back down. Okay, it's somewhere around here. It's It doesn't have a question mark, so it's a good measurement, but it's jumping around because I have, I'm zoomed in so close. It sure is having a hard time steadying on that phase shift but anyway the point is here is that what you're seeing okay is a phase shift and you cannot measure this type of coil with this type of measurement um so yeah that's all i wanted to share with you uh for those of you who have no idea what the heck you're looking at please check the links in the description and go look at some of the past rodent coil research those are all 3D printed for you 3D printing guys. Pretty sweet. Now I'm pretty sure we can get the exact same results of these Tesla pancake coils as we did with this, with the rodent coils and with these other. I have lots of different coils to test, but I don't think I need to. I think this brought you to the point. RWG Research, live, links in the description. Peace and love. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. See ya.